Dealing with borders is really easy with Tailwind CSS. Here I got a header and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add the class border. And what's going to happen now is that around my header, I will have a border of one pixel all around my header. Okay. If I want to deal with the width of this border, I can add a size. And of course, like always with Tailwind CSS, we can add um, a number to specify the size. Okay, so here I'm going just to add two. And when I get back and I update, we see that my border is thicker and I can go up to uh, eight or 12, I don't remember. But if you go on the official documentation, you will see that we can have really thick border, okay? What we can do also is to add border on the left or border on the right, okay? So there, what we have is that we can pass actually top, right, bottom, left directly to our border class. So let's try now to just put a border bottom element. And what's going to happen there is that we have the regular header that we would like to have. So basically here we have actually the border on the bottom. And if I had some padding on the top and bottom, let's say four, okay, PY4, suddenly, there we go, we've got our header. So I'm going to unzoom a little bit because I was zooming there. And there we go. We see that border, our border down is like this. Let's say that now I want to add actually a uh, border um, on the left and I want it to be a border on the left. I want it to be thicker as eight. I'm going to save here. What we see that suddenly we've got actually a thicker border on the left that has been pushed. And let's say that on the top, we would like to have a border top of four. What's going to happen is that on top, I'm going to have a border top of four. The same for the right, you understood. Actually, we could add borders like this very, very easily. So down there, we've got a parent division with three elements there. And when I update, we see that with the divide y class and the divide color. So let's put a red instead and not a 200, but 500. We can see that between my elements, I have now a division. Okay. And this is really cool because if I had one, you will see, I will not be obliged to deal with border top, border bottom between elements. I can use divide like this. I have now a basic input type text. And what I want to do, I want to basically add a specific border to it and I want it to be colored. So if I go on border color, as I see there, I have an example. I can specify the color of my border specifically by passing the color after border. So here I got my border to and border rows 600 on my input. And when I get back, there we go. There we see that. So I'm going to put the outline none class to not see the outline blue that we see. There we go. Now we see that my border is actually, okay. My border is actually uh, rose. Okay. So I pass the class. It's really easy to see. So here you got all the colors, of course, provided by Tailwind to pass your color. For the border style, it's exactly the same. What you want to do is here to put, for instance, a border dashed, okay? And suddenly we've got the effect of a border dashed. There we go. Otherwise, you have the border dotted. So if you put border dotted, you will have actually the border dotted, okay? All right. It can be useful sometimes, you never know. Or you can have the border double if I update. There we go, we've got the border double, okay? With border style also, you can specify border known. There we go. If you don't want to have a border, this is how you deal with border styles. Remember the divide, you can specify the width of your divide. So here we got three elements and we say to them divide on X. So basically I copy pasted the element there. So I'm going to update and there we go. So we've got the divide there. And what's going to happen is that we can say also that we want to 
uh, reverse, flex call reverse here, and reverse the divide also. It's also working with the divide width, but we can also work with the divide color. So for instance, we can put a divide. So here I'm going to work on divide red 500, okay? And suddenly we got a divide color that changed. For the divide style, you understood, it's exactly the same as the border. So let's put a divide dashed, which is very useful. There we go, divide dash. So working with the style color and width of divide, it's exactly the same as the border. Instead, you are using divide as a first class. I showed you before that we can remove the outline. However, if you want to have outline, we can also use, as you see there, the outline class to add an outline to an element. So I'm going just to copy paste this element there. And there we go. So here I got my button C and with outline, outline offset and outline four. Now you understood that outline four is for the size of the outline and the offset is for the space between the uh, element and the outline. So there we go, we got something not really nice there, but we see that we've got some kind of like a border, but it's creating actually an outline. If you don't want to have an outline, you can use outline known. And it's working, of course, exactly the same. If you want to change the color, you can pass outline the color and the weight of the color, and then suddenly it's changing your color. For the style, you can use dash, you can use dot, doubled, exactly, and for the outline, exactly the same. Finally, let's talk about rings, and rings are creating, actually, box shadow around our elements, okay? So here I got some examples, okay? of ring uh, four. Let's take this one and let's see what's gonna happen if I put actually ring offset and ring four. So there in my class, I'm going to put ring offset and ring four, okay? So I'm going to update and what's gonna happen is that around my button, I'm gonna have this kind of box shadow, which is actually the ring effect, okay? It's applying a solid box shadow of a specific thickness to an element. So sometimes you want to focus on element like this, okay? And you want that we let a trace around it. This is actually what's happening in there. And actually those classes are very useful. If you really want to work on the accessibility of your app, you are going to use all those classes and all those elements provided by Tenrin to improve this accessibility.